Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm talking about um, the last time I went to the emergency room for mental health purposes. Um, I'm not going to call it the last time because like, I don't know if I'll need to go in the future, but currently it is the last time I went. Um, so I'm gonna give like a little bit of like a background so you know what's going on and like it makes sense to you. So I have some like notes written out. So basically like I have had a lot of mental health emergency room visits in my life and basically all of them like I didn't get help. Um, the very first one was a suicide attempt. And they didn't put me in the mental health... Like, they basically did nothing. Had me see someone from an agency for, like, two months. And then... My school did more, though. Like, my school caught wind about it. And, um... They put me in depression and anxiety counseling. At school. So, like, I would miss, like, one period once a week. To go and... Um... Do that. So... It was, like, way back when I was younger, though. Like, that first time I was 15. And then I went again, like, multiple times throughout the years after that. Um, there was one where, like, basically I went in and I was, like, I have, like re like, really bad suicidal thoughts. Like, I need help. And they basically just, like, sent me, like, referred me to a psychiatrist, which I hated. I only saw them once, and I didn't go back. Um, and they referred me to a, like, free counseling service for youth. And I went to that for, like, eight months, but, like, I don't know, it was in a... I waited 11 months on the waiting list to, so I could see a counselor. And then I just started, like, that was, I started seeing them basically, like, when everything started going downhill. Because it was, like, a very gradual thing. So, and, like, the type of therapy that they had me doing was cognitive behavioral therapy. And I needed more of DBT. Okay, if you know what DBT stands for, I can't fucking pronounce shit sometimes. Um, yeah, so I did that for eight months, and I ended up getting kicked out because I just kind of stopped showing up to my appointments. There was one time where I went in and basically like they put me in this room that was like really old and like the bed, like it wasn't a bed, it was just a cement slab. Like, <laughs> and I was basically like, I felt the ground like shaking under me like every once in a while. Um, like it kind of felt like an earthquake and... I just was like really out of it and like just not okay and they're like oh yeah you just have heightened anxiety we're gonna send you home like didn't refer me to a psychiatrist nothing they're just like it's heightened anxiety you're good you can go home and I'm like okay that's great I think that was the last time before like the time that I'm gonna talk about that I went was when they like were like yeah it's heightened anxiety um, so basically I'm diagnosed currently with bipolar disorder. We're not sure exactly which type, but my current psychiatrist, last I talked to her about it, was leaning more towards type 1. Um, I have complex, complex PTSD, which these two I mentioned in my mental health video, but I didn't make notes for that video, so like I was kind of all over the place and I missed a lot of stuff. So I didn't talk about where I was diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder and bulimia and I also didn't talk about all the treatment I did for my bulimia I was literally currently in treatment when I made that video which is like hilarious like I just completely gapped on it um, and I have a suspected concurrent disorder so I still have to bring that up to my psychiatrist but it's been like noticed in like other professionals in my life that like it's it's a possible thing so okay so 
what was going on? Like, what led me to go to the hospital that day? Basically, I was having, like, hallucinations, delusions. I was constantly dissociating. And, like, that dissociation was going on for, like, a year. Like, it was constant. Like, I just... Like, nothing seemed real. Like, it was crazy. Um... I had psychomotor agitation, suicidal ideation, rage control, rage control issues, mood swings. I had a lot more than that, but like those were like the main ones that I can remember. I'd also have like really weird urges. Like I remember I'd have urges to like eat rocks, and like obviously like I didn't. Like I knew like I can't eat a rock, but like I wanted to, which is really weird. Um. So basically May 5th, 2018 comes around. My memory from back then is really bad. So the first thing that I remember about this day is being in my boyfriend at the time's car in a parking lot, like a big ass parking lot for like multiple stores. And I don't know what happened to cause this. Um, I don't think I left the house with the intention of going to the hospital. I think we left the house because I was having an emotional breakdown, which I tended to have like multiple times a day. And sometimes when they happened, we'd like go out and get coffee and just sit in the car so I could calm down. But this time was different and I just was not calming down. So basically I'm sitting in the car bawling my eyes out, like bawling, and I am like smashing the side of my leg, like ma like the side of my knee kind of thing, against the car door like really hard, and then like, like I said, my memory is really bad from back then, but Either I thought it or he, like, said it to me, like, hey, you're gonna break the door. So I stopped hitting, like, my leg off of the door, but, like, I couldn't stop moving. Like, the feeling was horrible. Like, I can't even explain, like, what was going on. But, like, I, I don't know. I started stomping my leg, like, my foot, like, really, really, really hard. And then he was basically just like, you're gonna put a hole in my fucking floor, stop doing that. Like, he didn't say it like that, like, he said it really nice, but like... So I was like, well, I can't stop moving my leg, he's like, just slam it into the car door, like, there's less of a chance you're gonna break that. Then we go to... I don't know if, like, that's when I was like, oh, I think I need to go to the hospital, or he was like, you should go to the hospital, like, I don't know who brought that up. Um, next thing I remember is being in the parking lot at Harvey's and Harvey's was kind of like on the way to the hospital from where we were so I'm thinking like it was probably brought up before we went to Harvey's like we knew that like we weren't really going to be able to eat at the hospital so maybe we'll get like some food before we go kind of thing I think that's what happened so we went to Harvey's and like at this point like I've calmed back down, like, I'm fine, like, not smashing my leg into the car door anymore, like, I'm smiling a bit, laughing a bit, and, like, we eat our food, we're good, we're joking around, and then we finish our food, and he goes, okay, I think it's time to bring you to the hospital, and he said that, like, as soon as we started driving towards the hospital, the mood in the car just shifted so tremendously, and I started crying again and I'm thinking about like what am I gonna say to the triage nurse and the only thing I could think of was I'm losing my mind I'm going crazy I need help like please just help me sorry like this is I haven't talked about this day in like a really long time so I might get a little bit emotional so basically like I only remember like a snippet of it and like like there's gonna be a few of these that I talk about where I just have like a one second memory um 
And I remember In My Blood by Shawn Mendes came on the radio. It was the first time I heard it. And I the snippet I have is, like, we're just about to turn into the hospital parking lot. And, like, I started, like, actually, like, realizing what the song was about and, like, listening to it. And I just started crying even harder. But that was because I knew that what I was doing was the right thing. So we went in to see the triage nurse. So basically, like, the hospital that... I went to in the hospital that I currently go to. Um, when you walk into the ER, you have to like stop and stand in this like little area and wait for somebody, like one of those nurses, to approach you. And then they'll ask you for your name, they write it down on a list. And then they ask you, why are you here? And I'm not sure why they ask you that, because, like, they don't tell you and they don't write it down. They're just like, oh, okay. So she's like, why are you here? And I'm like, bawling. And I'm like, I'm going crazy. Like, I don't know what I said. Like, I'm pretty sure I said I'm going crazy or, like, I'm having a breakdown or, like, something along those lines. And then they're like, okay, take a seat. And, like, there's, like, a bunch of seats set up. And, like, we sat down. And it wasn't very long, like, it was literally, like, a minute or two, and then my name was called into triage. And they took my blood pressure and everything like that, and I'm still bawling. And I don't remember anything that I said to this woman, like, um, and then after you see that nurse, you go back into the waiting room, like, and then you go to another nurse, and then that's when they put... I'm trying to remember when they put the bracelet on. It's either the second nurse or the third nurse. But anyways, you have to see three different nurses in the emergency department before you go to any doctor or anything like that. And they have different areas of emergency department. So, like, where you come in, you get triaged, and then you have to follow, like, certain colors, like, colored lines, or, like, go through certain doors. Like, they'll tell you go this way and go to this care center. It's usually care center or whatever. Um, and all care centers do different things. So, basically, um, they had me go to an area I had never been to before. Um, because I've been to that hospital, like, a lot, but, like, for physical things. Um, and it's actually the same hospital that was just, like, yeah, it's just anxiety. So, they bring me basically into this, like, silent room. I'm pretty sure that's what they're called. Um, I've been in one once before. And that was when my, it was the day before my mom died. And the doctor basically, like, sat us down and was like, hey, listen, she's, she's not doing well. She's not going to make it. This is what's going on. So, I hate being in silent room. So, anyways, they had me in the silent room. But I guess this room is just generally what they used for mental health patients when they came in through the ER. I was, like, gripping the chair, like, really hard. And, like, I learned later when I was in therapy, because, like, the counselor slash therapist um, noticed that I was doing this, like, through all of the sessions. I would sit there and I would like put my arm like that, like flat on the thing and like hold like the down part here and I would like grip really, really, really hard. When I was doing this, I could feel like this breaks my heart. This chair was made of like a very, very, very hard plastic and I could feel fingernail imprints in this chair from previous people doing the exact same thing I was doing, gripping the chair, but they were gripping it so hard that their nails left an imprint in this hard-ass plastic chair. And I'm like, holy shit, like, that's insane. This, eventually this, like, it doesn't take very long, like, they're taking this very seriously. So... This girl comes in, I don't know who she was, I don't remember who she was, if she was a social worker, a nurse, or, like, I don't know. 
Um, but she comes in and she's like, wow, you have like a big file. And a lot of it's mental health. I'm like, yeah. And she's like, well, I don't want you to be disappointed this time because we're going to help you. I promise you that. You've been struggling with this for too long and nobody's done anything. We are going to help you today. And that was honestly like the best thing that I could have ever heard. So she asks my boyfriend to step out. Just because, like, if there's somebody else in the room with you when you're talking about this kind of stuff, like, someone who is important to you, there's going to be more of a chance that you're not telling the truth because you don't want them to know the extent that it truly has gotten to. So I don't remember anything that I said to her. No, I remember one thing. I said, if I stop smoking weed it feels like the world's going to explode. Um, so she left the room and I like expected my boyfriend to like come straight back in, like she leave, he come in like kind of same time thing. But he didn't come in right away. And somebody who's like going through like that, those like that severe of symptoms of mental health, like that's anxiety provoking, that's terrifying like. So he eventually comes in, and I don't remember when he told me this, but he basically told me, like, the reason why he didn't come in right away is because the nurse was talking to him. She basically said that, like, I have very black and white thinking. Um, and, like, there's a word that she used for this next part, and I can't remember for the life of me what it is. But I'm just gonna try and, like, say the gist of what it was. So basically she said that, like, the way I react to things and, like, internalize things, like, take things in and stuff like that, isn't the same as everybody else. So, yeah. From here, they form me and move me to the emergency mental health ward. Um, it had actually... Like, it's the nicest mental health ward I've been in. I've been in three now, emergency mental health wards. Um, the other two were, like, really gringy and, like, scary. And, like, you could hear everything that was going on in every room. Like, it was the saddest, like, so sad because, like, you would hear people, like, screaming and, like, crying. and Like, you knew like they were hearing voices because they'd be like talking back to them but they'd be saying like weird things it was really sad so this time like i think the room were all soundproof and there was like a window with a curtain on the outside um and like a door that locks and then you got your bed here and there's a camera in the corner here and when they put me in the ward, they, like, let my boyfriend come with me. We were sitting in my room for a while. They came and brought me clonazepam. And, um, I don't know what dose they gave me that night, but it did a number on me. So I was prescribed it after I was, uh, discharged. But I was only prescribed to 0.5, and I was only prescribed to a week's worth, which was actually kind of like two weeks worth, because I was supposed to be taking two a day for a week, but I know how addictive that can be. So I made those 14 pills last me two months, because I was not taking them every day, I was only taking them when I absolutely felt like I had no other choice, like there was no other way out of what was going on, so... Um, or I took them when, like, I couldn't, like, for the life of me, like, I've been trying to sleep for, like, four or five hours and not getting to sleep, like, I need to sleep. So they gave me the clonazepam, and I don't, I might get emotional here, I'm sorry. Um, they gave me the clonazepam to basically calm me down and put me to sleep. Um, and they gave it to me, and, like, a huge, like, my boyfriend was still there. And a huge part of me wanted to go to sleep with him there because I didn't want to be alone in that room at night with my thoughts. 
but a bigger part of me wanted to spend every waking moment that I had with him because I was so sure that they were going to put me in an inpatient hospital ward. Yes, yeah, so I chose to not go to sleep. I just started to get like really giggly and like, cause like, the anti-anxiety meds, like the benzos were kicking in and I just felt really weird and it made me feel better. I think that made him feel a little bit better knowing that like he wasn't leaving me in like this really horrible state. So yeah, I stayed awake until I stayed awake until he left. Um, and I thought like once he left I'd just lie down and I'd like boom be out. But that's not what happened. So I was lying there for a while, couldn't fall asleep, I started crying again. You know when like you feel like somebody's watching you? Well, that's the feeling I had because of the camera in the room. And I hate that feeling, like I hate being stared at, I hate being watched. Um so my solution? Curl up in a ball underneath the camera so that hopefully I'm at an angle where they can't see me. And that's the last thing I remember. I don't know if I fell asleep on the floor or like I got up and went back into my bed, but like I woke up in my bed so like I don't know, like I could have fallen asleep on the floor and like like one of the security could have come in and like put me in the bed. Um, but I woke up in my bed the next morning around like 10 a.m. And I opened the door, like, I was avoiding this the whole time, like, I was hoping so hard I would not have to do this. Um, because if you need to go to the bathroom and you're in the mental health ward, you have to have security escort you. Um, yeah, so the next morning comes and, like, I really gotta pee. So my door wasn't locked because, like, I wasn't high risk. So I open my door and I peek out and I'm like, Hey, um, sorry to bother you, but I need to use the washroom. And they're like, okay, I'll escort you. They take me to the washroom, bring me back. And then my boyfriend came back with, like, a change of clothes and, like, stuff like that. Um, and, like, we're talking. Like, it's okay. I don't know. I don't really remember what we were talking about. And the psychiatrist came in, and I'm pretty sure my boyfriend stayed for the whole appointment. Um, so he got to, like, witness, like, what that looks like. And she, on the spot, diagnosed me with borderline personality disorder. So as you know, when I, at the beginning of this video, when I told you what I'm diagnosed with, that was not one of them, so that was actually a misdiagnosis, but I don't blame her for it because she was literally going off of one visit, and like, it doesn't work like that, like, you need more than one visit. So basically, after all that, she gave me a choice between doing one of their outpatient programs or doing inpatient. And... At first when she said that, I was like, I need inpatient. Like, in my head, I was like, I need inpatient. But then I was like, okay, well, what are the differences? Like, she was like, well, inpatient, we're basically just going to watch you until you show less symptoms. Um, outpatient, you'll actually be doing therapy for five hours a day. And I'm like, okay. Well, I think I'll do outpatient because I need that therapy. Um, and then I was discharged and I went home. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that this video inspires you to go get help if you're going through any mental health concerns, how small or big.
should always, always, always keep your mental health a priority because you never know where it's going to go. The mind is a very powerful place. So thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day. Bye.